since the OLTP systems cannot be used for reporting, now we have built a separate system called as a data warehouse, which is used to integrate the data. Let's say you have a different OLTP systems. When I say different OLTP system, it can be a database or it can be a, any legacy system or something, so which you have. So suppose, let's say, let's take a simple example. And uh, if you see, eBay has a multiple sites. And they have, to carry out the operations in India, they have one system. To carry out the operations in US, they have one system. To carry out the operations in uh, Europe, they have another system. Because they cannot run only one application which can actually perform, I mean, which can be used to perform the operations across the globe. So that is not possible. So let's say they have developed a different OLTP application. So when they are developed, let's say eBay US, so assume that this is being developed in SAP system. Let's say to handle all the operations they have developed, you, uh, SAP. And similarly, eBay APAC region, so whatever is there, let's say they have developed in Oracle database where they, have, they are storing the data in Oracle database. These are all your OLTP systems, means which are used for a daily operations. So if you are a US customer, uh, you'll start using this application. If I'm an Indian customer, I'll start using this application. So similarly, let's say to handle the operations in uh, Europe, let's say they have developed the mainframes application itself, directly mainframes, so where they are storing the data, which is nothing but a DB2 database, which it is stored. So if you see the data is being distributed, OLTP data, whatever that is there, it is being distributed across the multiple applications in this. So these OLTP applications cannot be used for reporting. This cannot, we cannot use it for reporting because of its uh, normalized structure of data. And mo uh, most, I mean, uh, historical data is not available. So that is the reason, since we cannot use these distributed OLTP systems for analysis purpose, that's why we are building a separate database, or you can call it as a separate data warehouse in the technical terms, which will integrate the data from all these applications. So when you are integrating the data, you will integrate the data from different OLTP applications into a centralized database. So this is nothing but a centralized database where we store the data for analysis purpose. So when I'm choosing my data warehouse, I can choose any database as a data warehouse, as I said in the earlier. Now, when you talk about these OLTP systems into the process of integrating the data into this is called as an ETL process. So as you all know that ETL stands for uh, extraction, transformation, and loading. So ETL stands for extraction, transformation, and loading. So extraction is nothing but reading of data from your OLTP systems, transforming the data, and load the data into the data warehouse. So this is, I mean, reading the data, transforming the data, loading the data is not the job of ETL, ETL tester, actually. So ETL tester, what they does is, they'll actually, uh, uh, whatever the programs that are developed by the ETL developers, they uh, test those programs. So we have different ETL tools which are available in the market. So I mean, uh, when you are building a data warehouse, you can use any any ETL tool. So as an ETL tester, you should be prepared to understand uh, any type of an ETL tool. So which we have, most of the ETL tools are similar. I mean, the functionality and the UI will be a little different, but all the ETL tools will be same. So. If your uh, data warehousing project is using the uh, Informatica as an ETL tool, you should be able to understand Informatica programs and test it. But as part of this training, we are going to understand Informatica, how it is there. Let's say you have Informatica Power Center. Informatica Power Center is an ETL tool uh, which is used to build a data warehouse. And we have a uh, different other uh, tools like Data stage. Data stage is another ETL tool which is used. And uh, the next one is about, you're going to talk about the Abinitio. This is also another ETL tool which you have. And you'll have uh, different other tools like ODI, Oracle Data Integrator, and everything. 
So these are all the different detail tools and we have much more but I am not going much in detail about it. So these are all the different detail or middleware tools which are used to integrate the data from OLTP system into the warehouse. So I'll just come back to the tester responsibilities, what you have to do it. So once you load the data into the, you know, this uh, warehouse and this data is actually used for a reporting. So how are you going to do the reporting uh, out of it? So when you say uh, to generate the reports for a business users, we are going to use uh, different BI tools. So this different BI tools uh, will help you to generate the reports. So the process of generating the reports from the data warehouse and showing the reports, I mean data in the form of, you know, uh, yeah, I mean uh, you can mute yourself, there is a noise coming up again, so it would be helpful if you could mute yourself. Uh, Padma, if you don't mind, can you mute yourself? So this here, um, you will actually um, generate the reports from here. So to generate the reports, business users cannot write SQL queries again and start generating the reports. So for them, we have uh, different BI tools which helps you to generate the reports from the data warehouse. That process of generating the reports is called as a BI process. I mean business intelligence process. You have a various BI tools which generate the reports in the form of pie charts, bar graphs, all those things. So as a uh, as part of a data warehousing testing, you should be you should test all the ETL programs which are used to integrate the data, and you should test all the BI programs which are used to generate the reports. So now, when we talk about the BI tools, so here as part of this training, I'm going to show you the demonstration of OBIE, Oracle Business Intelligence Enterprise Edition. And you have, um, you know, the different other tools like Cognos, and uh, you also have uh, different tools like Business Objects. And uh, these type of uh, different um, uh, BI tools which are there. So we are going to understand about the OBIE, how the OBIE will be used to do the reporting. So when you talk about a data warehouse, data warehouse will consist of two things. One is a ETL process and other is a OBIE. So which is, uh, I mean, other is a BI. So together which is called as a ETL plus BI, together is called as a DWBI. So when you walk in as a tester, you should be performing the tester responsibilities of ETL testing process as well as a BI testing process, how do you use it. So now I hope um, everybody has got the idea of what is a ETL is all about and what is a BI. So we'll understand what are the ETL tester responsibilities and what are the BI, uh, BI testing responsibilities. So ETL tester, as an ETL tester, what you have to perform and what kind of queries you have to write in using it. So ETL testing is a completely a manual testing process. You don't have any automation tools and there are automation tools which are there but still the automation tools are not, not so popular in carrying out the analysis, I mean carrying out the testing process and all. So we have automation tools like query search and you have something called as a, from Informatica itself there is, they have released one testing tool called as Informatica DVO, Informatica Data Validation Option. So which are not so popular, still the people are actually trying it up, but a complete followed process is a manual testing process. So it's completely a manual testing process. As I said, you're going to carry out by using a SQL. Okay. So let's say what kind of testing you do and how do you do it. Let's say you have a table called as a, uh, just think about the customer table which is being there and you're loading the data from this customer table into the there is a another table called as a dim customer so we actually classify the tables into two types in the warehouse one is a dimension another is a file so assume that you have developed the program i mean etl developer has developed the program which will integrate the data from this customer table to this dim underscore customer table there is a program and these ETL programs will be scheduled on a daily basis. So this will start extracting the data 
from your OEDP to your OLAP. OLAP or a data warehouse both are the same. <coughs> OLAP means online analytical processing system because data warehouse is used for analysis. We call it as a OLAP, online analytical processing system. So now, so what kind of testing you do? So you have a customer table here and you have a DIM customer table which is loading the data into this. So we carry out the different types of testing. So first one is a smoke testing. So in a smoke testing, it's a simple one. What we actually validate is that, so we will verify whether your target table is present in the warehouse or not, whether it has the data for testing or not, and the structure of the, I mean structure means column, column validation. So, so something like, let's say your DIM customer table, uh, whether it has a proper data types which are defined and the structure of the data validation is uh, same as per the data model or not. All those things will validate as part of the smoke testing. So in the smoke testing, what do you validate? So verify the table existence in the table existence um, in the data warehouse. And you'll also verify whether the ETL programs are present. So that is nothing but we call it as a mappings. Uh, mappings are present in the, I mean after the migration, whether they are present in the uh, QA repository or not, or a QA environment or not, that we are going to validate. And we are going to validate the valid, uh, data model validation. In the, in the sense like, generally what happens is that uh, developers will design the data model and they create the programs, I mean they create the tables, I mean to say. Uh, they create the tables, but the tables will have a structure different from what is there in the data model. So we are going to validate all the table structures. Uh, when I say structure, that is nothing but a column validation. So all the structures which will validate, all the structures which will validate against the data model. So the data model will be provided to you. That is maybe in the form of a PDF document and all those things. So we are going to validate against the data model. So these are the things that we, which we actually uh, do in the smoke testing process. And the, another type of testing that we do, that is your, uh, you know, uh, after a smoke testing that you do is a functional testing. So what do you mean by functional testing here? So when we talk about uh, functional testing, functional testing will be carried out based on the different terms. So one is with a count validation. So count validation means, so let's say count validation. So let's say what happened with the count validation is that let's say you have a, a customer table. In this customer table you have 1000 records and your ETL program has extracted the data from this customer table and loaded into this. So when it has loaded, so 1000 records should exist if your uh, program is not eliminating any of the records. So count validation will make sure that number of valid records in the source is matching with the number of, uh, I mean, number of records loaded in the target. So you are going to validate the count of records or count of rows which you can call with the help of an SQL. You will identify the number of um, records which are present in the customer table with the number of records which are available in the dim underscore customer table. So this, you are going to write the different SQLs to perform the count validation between the source and target. 